goes. Take a look in my game face. Ain't no stopping me. You know I'm coming in first place. Well, stop it till I get that ring. I'ma dominate all day. No matter who you bring, I will not lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not lose. Yeah. I, I, I will not lose. Yo, what up? It's your boy, J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. I am happy. I'm so happy today. <laughs> uh, not because I'm here with you guys. Not because you guys are out there watching and already filing in early on a Tuesday. I'm happy because the Phillies have won a few games in a row. Cassidy's out there hitting Mays. I don't know who that guy is, but he's out there. <laughs> uh, uh, Harper's out Willie there. Willie Mays Hayes? Do Willie Mays Hayes? <laughs> I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Um, the opposite mayonnaise, like you said, mayonnaise. Yep, preseason is over <laughs> for football. Um, I can I can smell the 76ers on these fall days when my leaves are falling, but today it was apricot, so it reminded us that we're still not ready uh for, for fall yet. It's still a, bit, a little bit of summer hanging on uh for Labor Day weekend. What's up, Jason? What's going on, man? False fall is over, and we're back in the finishing out summer. That's right. Harrelson. Yes, I'm. I'm ready to talk. I'm ready for the fall. I'm ready for the birds. I'm excited. I'm excited. So you know, it's still hot, though. Like you said. Yeah. So next week on a Tuesday, we'll be coming in hot after Labor Day, and it's going to be a nice. I don't like it at all, but it will be nice that we come in on Tuesday. Wednesday's off day. There's going to be Thursday night football to start the season. Then the Eagles are Friday night. Yeah, gross. And then, <laughs> but it's gross. But it's nice because we get it earlier in the week. I got. Yeah. Only thing better than Friday night is. Thursday night, just yeah. to get to get the season started. Then we gotta wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. gotta wait. <laughs> okay. As long as we win, it don't matter. Correct. Right. <laughs> well, now, when we win, yeah, we need to do predictions for next yeah, week. Exactly. When we win, then we get to ride that high the whole time, and you get to sit Sunday and just look at the rest of the league, stress free. Yeah. Uh, high off that George W. And um, yeah, you know, uh, it's all, all the colloquials are gonna come back George W's, and uh, football. Football is like here now. Uh, today was cut day. Uh, we're going to talk about that. The Eagles did their cut list in the worst way humanly possible today. Uh, they put out a video of who made the team instead of an actual list of it was who weird. got cut. It was weird. I mean, it's nice or whatever, but it's like it makes you do work, and I don't like working. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed that, but working is not my jam per se. Um, it's also so, weird because the roster is not set when they do that. You know, like that's a lot of work for something that's fluid. <laughs> Well, and the Eagles are a media company, and right. Jeffrey Lori is like, I'm not paying you guys for nothing. Go out <laughs> and film something and edit it and put it up there and get it together. So uh, that's what they did. But let's start with the Phillies. Harry, you're yeah. wearing red. It's not mm -hmm. Philly. I know it's red. No, it's just a red shirt. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. All, all, every, any red I wear is Phillies red. Any red I wear is Phillies red. I know so. my red hues. Uh, how, how you feeling? Are, are the Phillies back, Harry, in your eyes? You know, I think I've talked about it before. It's all about, you know, like hitting the hitting the right wave at the right time sort of thing. And I think, you know, like you said, we're winning a few games here and there or in a row now, but also against some good teams, right? We beat the, we've got a, one, at least one game against the Braves and the Royals a couple games, uh, you know, now the Astros. So beating good teams at the end of the day was the was the worry at the beginning of the season. We we're beating up on cans. So uh, beating good teams at the end of the season right now, whether we're, we're hitting our stride or not, that's a good sign. So I'm excited. And the Royals are a good team. Um Yeah. Jason, how are you feeling about the Phils? Um, I'm kind of stuck in this weird indifferent phase like I am with the Sixers where, like, I know they're good. I know that they're going to come around and start winning games. I have a big series coming up against the Braves. But at this point, it's like, I just need to wait and see what's going to happen in the playoffs. Like, it stinks. I let it mess up my summer because I was trying to just enjoy the ride. Oh, they, you, didn't, they, you didn't let it mess up your summer. They messed up your summer. But, yeah, like, you know, I was trying to enjoy that ride the whole time. I just wanted to enjoy the season. It was fun. Everything was going good. And all of a sudden, it wasn't. And now I'm just stuck. And it's like, well, I guess I'll find out in the end of September, October, kind of like the Sixers. Like, now that's all that matters at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, anybody that's watching this knows that, like, I pretty much took the summer off from just creating my little content, soundbite videos, stuff like that. And it was because the Phillies had me depressed. I mean, I, and sometimes I'm like Negadelphia, but I, I consider myself a realist about life and anything. You know, the world's a beautiful, shitty place. But when we're we got down bad like we were, and I had no hope of it changing, 
I'm like, I can't even make content anymore because I'm not happy and I'm not going to kick my own team in the back all the time. Steve Fox, Steve, what up? what's I up? He was lurking. You know how I knew because we got a like and yep. still out there throwing out the thumbs up. Yeah, you know I mean, I knew. <laughs> I knew the shark was in the water. I yeah. <laughs> right. Anybody else want to be like Steve? You want to forget being like Mike? Be like Steve. Be like Hit Steve. Up, <laughs> subscribe and share. You know what I'm saying? Keep it, keep it jumping, Steve. Keep it jumping. But um, I, I just wasn't in the mood to like kick my team in the back. And I was trying to explain to somebody else. They're like, sometimes you get real negative. I'm like, bro, it's still my team. Mm -hmm. I can talk shit on my team. But let's say a Braves fan came in here. <laughs> I never lived. I don't care what nobody said. Hell no. It was 92 games. They better than you and your mama sucks. That's how we roll around here. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? But we're in house fighting you know? We can fight all the time. Like I said, uh, if, if you saw the, the text messages between Jason and Harry and me, during during the Ben Simmons rise when he was okay, <laughs> you would think we weren't friends. Oh, you oh, would think we were not friends. Well, I you know I couldn't even see Harry for like six months at a time. <laughs> if I see him, he gonna stab me. Like he gonna he gonna be like, look. <laughs> oh God. If you read the messages, you would be like, yo, dog, why are y'all talking to each other? <laughs> <laughs> I was a complete asshole because I'm from the future. But like <laughs> outside of us, like we family. So when we talk, we I've been here duking it out. Like, bro, you know what I mean, mom ain't cooking the spaghetti like she used to. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's my mama. Exactly. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know, it's a real funny dynamic with me and with us as Philadelphia fans in general. Like okay. we are very much that even when we are, you know, clapping our hands, got the pom-poms out we still see it with an eye of what Jason said. Like you feel like, man, I'm trying to think positive. I'm trying to hope, but at the same time, the other teams have compounded it. Yep. And I think that um, leading into this Eagles year, that's what has a lot of people apprehensive. You watch the Sixers fold in the same way they always fold, which is a common thing. It's not anything different, but then when the Eagles go up 10 and they end the season the way they do, and there's so much turmoil and then you lose Kelsey and then you lose Cox to retirement and you lose like lifelong Eagles. It it does make you feel a certain way. So then when you're with the, with the Phillies and they're riding high, you're like, oh, yes. And then when they crash, you're like, it can't happen again, can it? <laughs> then it starts I mean, to get like you said, term, term I can't have hope. I mean, I don't have hope. I don't, I, I shouldn't have said excited earlier. I don't have hope. It's more so like I said, beating good teams at this stage in the season while having not played well. Like, that's very, like, very uh you know black and white for me you know i'm not i'm not looking at it as like oh wow we got the vibes because we don't have the vibes that's not what's happening right now it's just we have a good team we should be able to compete against good teams the fact that we are is a good sign that we're not collapsing totally <laughs> and that's what i'm kind of you know looking at right now so you know i, I think that my worry at the end of the year was like is everyone gonna get cold at the same time <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how it's been uh, for a while now so you know i hope that we pick up and uh just keep being a good team like we we're supposed to be so we're in the top of the ninth right now, and the Phillies are up 5-0. And um, Tywan Walker is dead to me, and that's not any fault of his <laughs> own because Alvarado is also dead to me. Like, it, it's it's like we well, need to have – he's out for a little, right? Yeah, uh, out for a little. Yeah, they didn't say why. Yeah, he's out. That's why I'm blinking <laughs> weird. That's what I'm say. And, like, the Eagles had a, a, a wide receiver today that was out today. Ania Smith. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, he's <laughs> – A I'm, rookie draft pick. For some like, reason, I keep blinking. He got hurt today. Yeah, I keep blinking. Just today. Eyes. So, okay. okay. <laughs> Glad you're payment. That was dangerous. I'm sorry. That was, that was really strange for me. But um, <laughs> something about lying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> up on the Astros makes you feel good, and it, it also makes me do the thing that we always say, which is absolutely true. It's baseball. It is 162 games. I feel like it shouldn't be 162 games. Uh, they've done a lot of stuff to speed up these games. I feel like in my mind, this is just an off-topic thing. Sweet spot for baseball would be like 132 games where right now would be the start of the playoffs for one reason and one reason only. We don't have a dome. Right. And Red October is my jam. Unless it's cold. Until it starts <laughs> getting cold. And the deeper you get into Red October, the better you're doing, the colder it gets. And I... I do think there's a weather thing to it, just same way as, like, I don't care what you say about life. Schwarber, come around June time, lights the world on fire. There's so, the, the heat heats up, and it starts getting 93 every day, and Schwarber is like, whoop, 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 whoop. Yep. like, oh, wow. Ball travels further. It, it does. Mm -hmm. It does. But then when it gets cold out here, 
a lot. Oh my God, Bryce Harper almost lost the World Series, and that ball dropped four feet. Mm. Any other time, if it wasn't, you know, yeah. 72 degrees out, 69 degrees out, nice. that ball would have been gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, thought that's just not up in there. <laughs> oh, maths, quick maths. But I'm saying, you know, so we don't have a dome. So I'm like, yo, give me 132 games. Let's start a post <laughs> in September so that we can end in red October and win like nine straight World Series. We'll say you guys. You like that? That sound good to you? It's a perfect plan. Okay. It sounds right. good. I feel like, you know, maybe a uh, climate change will make winter come a little earlier and they'll have to do it anyway. So <laughs> yeah. it might be coming. It might be coming. It's funny you say that. We can it gets cold in the playoffs right? now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I'm saying we, we hope for a little warm front. That's all. Well, yeah, I was going to say. There you go. Even you warmer. Warm front, you know <laughs> Extra I mean? warmth. Yeah, for, for sure. Bro. Yeah, yeah. We're, they're definitely, they're, it's, we're definitely trending towards that. Like I said, as this uh, little mini heat wave pops up. Um, some kids, some kids are going back to school already. I'm I know. Like, I see kids. Oh my god, it's I'm been like, like a week. <laughs> for like a week. <laughs> Why? I'm like, what the Why hell? They're on the. I'm, I see them not in school. That's how I know they're in school because I just see them on the corner, just like in the middle of the day. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. And Jason, like you said, you're getting early dismissal. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's what. Oh my god. Even though Jalen tried to donate all the air conditioners last year. Mm. Yeah. So we, we talked about that. I, I feel like every sports team should put air conditioning in every one of these schools. That should be their penance to do that. Um, uh, in case like, can we start? Can we start our kids in school now? Yeah. To get my kids out of the house. You leave. You leave my buddy Jace alone. He out there living his best life, uh, drinking all the juices and eating all the snacks out there because that's what my boy be doing. Um, and there are too many teams in the playoffs, uh, John. Too many teams in the playoffs. The regular season. Yeah, you're right about that's that. Good point. It, it, it did help us get in. <laughs> right. <laughs> it helps us. Yeah, it did help us get in, but it. it it feels weird because a lot of the wild card teams that just snuck in were winning. Not it wasn't hundred percent, but they were coming in hot because they were fighting to get into the playoffs. And again, it's about getting hot going into the playoffs is when it matters most. So if you're gonna have a skid, you'd rather have it now than any other time. So Steve, where are you at, Steve? <laughs> yeah, Steve, where are you at? Steve, Steve must oh, be like a North them kids. Athlete. Them kids been sweating in that. Oh my god. <laughs> That's By the not way, safe. I think fan base. Our most consistent thing is that we're going to overreact daily. That's a yeah. Yeah. consistent feature is we're going to overreact to everything. You know, and those guys are always telling us, like, oh, it's a long season. I'm like, I know it's a long season, but right now I'm pissed off. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, so let me be mad. <laughs> and that, and that, Florida. Okay. okay. Florida. Um, and that's what kills me about why are you watching the show, Steve? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> You've been a day one, too. What's going down in Florida? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> We need to open up a satellite division down there. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. Uh, uh, BG South, you know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, send, send, uh, send me down uh, there. Yeah, with his stash. Yeah, I can't send Harry down, down there with his stash. He ain't coming back. Yeah, <laughs> he, he ended up in the Florida Keys with somebody sugar bomb. I ain't. You, think you slick. You ain't going. You're I'm trying slick, to live a nice man. life, sir. I'm trying. Uh, you yeah. Take your ass here. <laughs> for me to oh, sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you seem like a dire for this guy. You know what you're talking about. But um. That's what kills me about the Phillies in this little drought. The things they were saying, it wasn't even the the way Trey was speaking when he was in a slump last year. Last year when Trey was in his personal slump, he was saying everything right. He couldn't do a damn thing right. right. But when he's like, yo, boo me. My mom's booing me. My mom called me up mad. Like, I can respect that. Because as yeah. a parent, you live in this world now where you're like, you got a soft coddle kid and you got to explain to him, nah, bro. Sometimes you just suck. Now, I'm not saying you got to kick me in the back every day, but at the same time, sometimes you need a little firm hand just so you know it, it ain't just you. <laughs> and I'm not here alone beating myself up in the middle of the night. Everybody's doing it, and I'm trying my best to do it, but at least you can acknowledge it. You can't stick your head in the sand and hide from things. But this year it seems like, well, you know, we're doing things. And we're just going to try. And we're, yeah, we're. <laughs> a lot of Mickey Mouse talking, right? Yeah. Uh, even Bryce, thank you for choosing me, but I'm like, come on, baby. Like, I need you out there with the mm. with the peacock hair. I'm like, <laughs> I, I was like, I need I need a little, little bit more language out of you, brother. I need, I need a little need, bit more fight. I need some fire right now. You're you're right, honestly. I mean, this whole year it's like been like we, now we had the two runs, right? The two runs and that were nice and kind of magical and kind of whatever sweet and had the song and this and that. And this is supposed to be the year we're like we're good now. We're we're a good team. We're not supposed to surprise anybody. We're supposed to handle business. And now it almost feels like the way the way like you said it's like the kind of soft talk, like you know we're figuring it out, whatever. I'm like I want some like 
some account. I don't know. It's more aggressive accountability and just like, yo, we want to be, we're, we're, we're trying to be better than this. We're trying to be a world series team. So I don't know. I want some more bravado, more, more energy. You want urgency. That's I the want the urgency. Yeah, urgency. exactly. That's a good way to put it. doesn't have any urgency. No. Makes moves with no urgency. His responses to issues lack urgency. And it just, it's trickled down through the team and the players, it seems. And Jason, do you know why we want that? Because we want to win. No, because they told us it before the season started. Mm. We're going out here to win the division. We're not out here to play yeah. around. They told us they had goals. They told us they were ready. They told us that the team was battle tested and understands what they did wrong and where they need to adjust. They told us yep. a lot of stuff. They were talking a lot of big dog, big stick walking, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Foles third leg talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> they were out there walking that walk, talk, and they were walking at the start. But then when they started falling down, I'm like, what you know, what we got going on? Um, so I I I feel like that was what set us all up for like, yo, it's it's our year. Yeah, like, this be our year. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be a cowboy, but you know what I mean. Well, this is our year. I don't say it every year, but this year I was saying it. Yeah, you know I mean, they had the hot start, and you're like, it is our year. <laughs> like, no way, it really is. I and put, then it quickly wasn't. I put my money on them ninety eight. Yeah, I mean, not having like again starting the year with Ranger and Wheeler and all those guys pitching the way they were. It's like, man, like where we and all the all the averages. I'm looking at the averages. Trey Trey Shiesty is like barely above three hundred still, and he's the only one that's still there. I mean, everybody else dropped. I mean, it's like we had guys batting three forty <laughs> the first like two months of the season. I'm just like, I don't. I want at least something to make me feel energy like that because like we haven't we had all that at once <laughs> and now not even a single you know uh, a person stepping. I mean, not that people aren't playing well, but it's just like I want that that fight that fire. So uh, go fighting's right. You're right, Mark. Great night tonight. They got that. Yeah. George w. They got another George W. It, and Ranger Suarez's numbers were so good. And so his numbers were so good. Yeah. It's impossible to keep that going. But I, I mean, I, I did throw a little five dollars and stuff on my little parlays with the Cy Young. Right. Yeah. They were, they were so nuclear at the plate and pitching. And yep. again, you that's what you're supposed to do. Beat up on the teams you're supposed to beat up on. And that's what bothers us all with the collapse because they're losing the teams that they shouldn't lose to. And you're losing five, four, three, five. And we're like, bro, just yeah. You know, overtime games where the other team is sacrifice flying to advance the second base runner to third. And then we sit there and go back up to bat and don't do that. Like, okay, so you swatch the strategy. Go do it. Why? Why not do it? Like, so there's certain things like you said yeah. with Jason with Topper that he's just not making adjustments. And it is a long season, but that's when you need to make those adjustments. So when the postseason comes, you don't make the same mistake you made the last two postseasons. Man. You don't make adjustments. Now he actually is sitting guys, pulling guys out, putting other guys up. That's what we asked for. Like, I know you got to stick with your guys, and they like routine, and they like consistency. You know what else they like? Winning. Yeah, That's what they like. Yeah. You know didn't, what I mean? Like, didn't, uh, didn't Joe Madden coach the Phils for like a, a year or, or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just thinking right now because I'm like Topper's got this stoic kind of quality to him that like was again like I don't I don't hate Topper and I think that when we're, things are going well it looks great he's like the stoic like just I believe in my guys it looks okay but like I feel like we need just like a cultural like people need to be really locked into this season and winning in a way that they don't you know react to, to the lulls like we kind of be reacting I feel like it brought the energy of the team down that we had the lull and now we, we can't get the energy back up. And it's like, what's gonna, what's gonna, what is gonna take for that to happen? So, I mean, we might need like a, you know, Bryce had the had the walk off, you know, the other day. So that could be something to help spark the end of the year. Like we'll see, but yeah, Bryce, um, Bryce is back to hitting right now. So yeah, you know, I mean, it, it is good. And um, I will say that right now, um, we are in a good spot. If the if the trend goes back up and we stay hot and get hotter going into playoffs, then I feel really good, good about the yep. team. But at the same time, our worry is topper and hitting. And that's weather. But right now, we got a winning streak. We out here winning. We out here doing it big. And uh, the Phillies are doing their part to help us be happy. And so uh, we're going to transition over to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, fly, Eagles, fly. Uh, we're on the road to victory. Um, next week, we'll be doing our actual predictions and stuff like that. But uh, tonight, I wanted to start with the division because um, – uh, what's the biggest need for the playoffs? Hit the curveball. <laughs> oh my god! Hit the curveball and and the bullpen, the bu the bullpen yeah. and uh, as as see because sometimes on this show we talk very simplistic and I and you know we're not the nerds like if you want a spin rate guy on I'm here I'll get a guest you or we can start talking <laughs> about spin rate after the season next year we're gonna have a spin rates or spin rate segment where Jason can go in here and talk about spin rate but for right now. <laughs> 
I would like for one thing and one thing only. In the playoffs, your knee should never touch the fucking dirt when you swing the bat. <laughs> and if you're cold, don't swing at the first pitch. If you mm. haven't hit a ball for four at bats, your job is to watch a pitch. Yeah. Period. <laughs> like, and that's the thing where I'm like, where what is coaching about? Because when Turner's bad, he literally goes up there and swings at everything. And the pitcher knows it. And throw some absolute trash, and he can't help himself a swing. So when you walk up there, hey, bro, the last three of bets, you swung at nothing. Could you just, just take watch one? Just they should tell them one. to do it. They should make them. Like, I don't understand, like, why that's not a thing in baseball anymore. I feel like it used to be, and it's not, it maybe. Like, baseball. We just don't do we it. Just don't, we, yeah. When you I watch mean. other teams, you can see, that, bro. It, like <laughs> we definitely don't do it. We definitely don't do it. That's to the point where I thought it doesn't exist anymore. Like, that's I, I, how much I got, we don't I do. I got all the games saved. I got to go rewatch yeah. the games. But Arizona, we were playing them. They had a guy that was at bat, and he had went like 17 for 18 at the plate. He said something to the coach, pissed the coach off. The coach took him oh, out yeah. of rotation for the game, didn't let him hit. He's like, yo, you're not doing this. 17 and 18 hits. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, he set him down. The team rallied. They lost that game. But then when he came back, he, he was hitting him. again. Yep. And yeah. guess what? Not one single time in no situation, whether there were two men on base, one man on base, anything, we never walked him ever. Not one time in that series. And you watched him go 22 for 24 at the plate. And not one time did you say, hey, you know what? Let's walk this kid. Let's get him out of rhythm. Let, I mean, not, not for nothing. I mean, no, we don't, we don't do no more. Touch him up. You know what I mean? Do <laughs> I mean, something, yeah. but at least walk him, not top her. Keep pitching no. to him. He said every single person we've thrown out there, but keep pitching to him and let him rock us. Let this one guy beat us. Uh, uh, strategy. I just want strategy. Anyway, no. I'm being that, negative. That might be the biggest need then, like you said, it's strategy. I yeah, mean, strategy. We just need strategy. But the Phils are winning. They won tonight. Uh, Ruben, yeah. you do that good. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles and the division. We're going to talk about the division all around the league. Let, so um, I know uh, shout out to all the people that just piled in after the Phil's game. I can't wait until the Phil's are over because then we can get back to having thousands of people watch us. I know, I know <laughs> that you're at the game right now. Where you're out there watching the game. You ain't got time for us on a Tuesday night, but I appreciate the rest. <laughs> a 50 of y'all just jumped in here real quick. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, do you want to start with? Uh, around the league, or you want to start with, with, with our division first and end with our division? Which one do you want to do? Let's go around the league. All right, let's let's start with the AFC East. Um, who do you got winning the division? The Jets, the Dolphins, the Patriots, the Bills. Harry? I'm going with the Dolphins. Uh, I mean, I just think – I mean, Tua's health is a huge uh, factor uh, for sure, but I just think, like, they have a more cohesive team. The offense is so good, and I just don't – the Jets are the favorite right now. I'm just like – they're the Jets, man. Like, I, they had Rodgers, Terrors, ACL, and, you know, four minutes into the game to start last season. So I'm just like they, – their juju has never been good. I don't believe in that. And, you know, Rodgers has to prove it, but I'm going Dolphins. Jeez. And the Bills, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. Well, I mean, I have to pick the Bills if I want to be able to go home. That's yeah, right. right. <laughs> right. In the division well, because I'm, they have the best quarterback in the division. Everybody, the Jets are the favorite for some reason. I'm not sure why. They still have the San Reddick was saga, whatever that is, mess on their hands. And Rodgers wasn't that good before he went to the Jets. And then he got hurt, and he's a year older. So I don't know why everybody assumes he's going to be super elite again to carry a team to the playoffs. I wrote a note here that said Jason's trying to get laid tonight. <laughs> so I'm just going to write that down. There, a little asterisk. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so for me, I am going to, just for funsies, I'm going to take the Jets. They were they win seven games a year with Wilson at the helm. If Aaron Rodgers is healthy, they've got a stacked defense. they got a couple wide receivers. Aaron Rodgers is out here, you know what I mean, going to Egypt and doing all this swarm of stuff. So if nothing else, it, this might be the one year that's a down year for the Bills because of the new wide receivers and defense turnover. Um, the Dolphins, they always fall short late in the year in the cold weather. We talked about weather. And I've got the Patriots being the worst team in the NFL this year. <laughs> yeah, they're one of the three worst. That's for yeah, sure. So I got hope. Hopefully that comes through for your boy. Um, so then we go down to the AFC North the Ravens, the Bengals, the Steelers, the Browns. Jason. Got to go with the Ravens. Uh, the Bengals would be the team that I think could push them the most, but Joe Burrow's wrist injury, he 
just started being allowed to throw a ball three and four days in a row. So that's kind of alarming. If you want to be a, a Bengals fan, they lost Joe Mixon in free agency. So I'm going to stick with the uh, Ravens. Lamar still, you know, a stud regular season quarterback, a little bit to prove in the postseason still, but they added Derrick Henry. That rushing attack is going to be kind of tough for people to stop. Harry. Yeah, I'm going with the Ravens too. I mean, I just think they're they're the team that I trust the most in that division. And like like Jason said, Bengals would be next. I mean, the Browns, you know, they they did a little something last year. I don't believe in Deshaun. They're not going to get that Flacco magic. Um, so yeah, Ravens, Lamar, run game is going to be good. Defense is going to be good. Uh, yeah, going to Ravens for sure. <sighs> just because I don't like you two, I'm going <laughs> to go with the Bengals. And uh, my boy got a haircut. He is the real Sam Sadie, and. Uh, <laughs> I agree with everything you're saying about the Ravens, simply too, because they have Derek Henry. We're going to actually see what he has left in the tank because we all know that the Ravens can do anything they want running the ball. And it's going to come down to passing late. It, it, it really is. And, and, and Lamar was the MVP of the league last year with a 24 touchdown, seven interception rate, but he just impacts the game so much. And the fact that he gets to play the NFC at all is an absolute joke. He's like 17 or 18 and one against NFC. So uh, I know what you guys said. You're probably right. And I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm just doing it for funsies. Uh, when we go back and look at this later, I will lie and say that I too was on the Ravens. <laughs> um, so then we need to travel down to the AFC South, uh, Harrelson, Jaguars, Titans, Texans, Colts. Who's winning the division? I was going back and forth with this a little bit, and then I remembered, like, I'm riding with CJ. I got to ride with CJ. I believe in CJ. Um, you know, CJ Stroud for the Texans. Uh, I think, you know, he's going to – talking about Lamar, right? Uh, to me, Lamar is that guy. You know, he's a great player, but he's not Mahomes, right? Mahomes is that, that guy. I think CJ is closer to maybe being that, that guy. And to me, that means there's not going to be a second-year regression, and he's going to he's gonna dominate again. So I'm going Texans. Jason. I expect some small regression from C.J. Stroud. Just, you know, second-year teams have a little bit more film on you. But look at the rest of that division. Anthony Richardson, we're not sure he can actually throw the football as dynamic as he is as a runner or last more than four or five games. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, he's as mid as could be. There's nothing special about him after all the hype. Uh, Will Levis, Mr. Mayo. Mayo! Mr. Mayo. <laughs> I mean, the Titans have revamped their entire defense. They're going to be interesting to see what they look like, but the Texans are going to take that division probably by a couple of games. So there's a guy. He's on TV. He's a he's a Jersey guy. He goes to Philly's games because his wife's from Jersey and Philadelphia area. Uh, Dan Orlovsky, he ran out of the back of the end zone. He's a Detroit Lion quarterback. He is one of the nicest, dumbest people I've ever seen in my life. And I say that with a kind heart because sometimes he likes to come to the rescue of Philadelphia. But he said Jalen Hurst isn't in the top 10 of quarterbacking. But the reasons he gave are the same reasons that Brock Purdy is in the top 10. Mm. The reasons that he's not are the same reasons he said that Richardson is. And I'm like, Richardson, the guy that only played four games, yeah, there's no the way. guy that's super mobile no. and got hurt and still hasn't thrown a ball. But you're talking about Jalen Hurts, who went to a Super Bowl and out through Patrick Mahomes, and you saw that. I'm like, what are we talking about? So, yes, Steve. Steve down Good in point, four. Steve. Who knows Good ball? Point. Steve <laughs> my ideas. Who put his comment up there for I got that? <laughs> of course it's the Texans. They got digs down there, and you better get digs that mammy jammy ball. The Texans are the best football team in Dallas. Yep. Oh, wait. It's not Dallas. It's Texas. <laughs> but I'm going to call it Dallas. The Texans are the best team in Dallas, Texas, Ashworth, Fort Henry, everywhere out there. there. Go. Galveston, <laughs> Galveston, San Antonio. <laughs> From Coast Key West to Key Largo and the border of the Texas State area, it is the Texans. They're, they play those punk-ass Dallas Cowboys this year, too, and I can't wait. To watch that game. Oh, that talk about oh talk about game of the week. <laughs> I can't wait. The CJ Stroud be talking versus Micah versus Micah. I'm that's gonna be good. Micah, and it's gonna be so get your popcorn ready. <laughs> I'm ready for that ass whooping. Uh, we all are on the Texans. And then um now here we go down here to these punk ass, mark ass, buster ass mm -hmm. AFC West. Mm -hmm. The Broncos, the Chargers, the Raiders, the Chiefs. Go ahead, Jason. Tell me what it is. I mean, you look and you want to pick someone else other than Kansas City, and there's just nobody you can simply make a good case for, right? The Broncos starting a rookie quarterback, the Chargers rebuilding, the Raiders starting Gardner Minshew. So the Chiefs, even they don't even have to win 12 games to win that division. I mean, you, just, you know, it just it's crazy when you look at it. There's just no challenge for them. It's like New England's run for all those years. There's just nobody that can challenge them. Harry. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be the Chiefs. I mean, looking at odds right here, they have the 
best odds to win the division of anybody in the NFL. So, I mean, you know, Jason said that you can't even make an argument for anybody else. Uh, it's Shut up, Harry. Who, who's, who's, who's coming in second in the division then? Oh, my God. I mean, the, I think the Chargers, like, I just got to believe in Herbert having some pride in himself as this this, this great quarterback he's supposed to be. crack cocaine and I'm going to mute Harbaugh, mic. Harbaugh. Okay, Come on, here. Harbaugh. But Har- the Broncos, yes. both of you guys are on crack cocaine. Yeah. What are you doing? You got you're gonna pick the Raiders. The Raiders, I, 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 the Raiders yeah. are my gut choice, but I mean, I thought about it for a second. <laughs> I'm the Raiders. No way. No the Raiders way. Best in that you are out of you. So okay. I don't know, man. They picked another tight end. Their tight ends aren't even good. <laughs> okay, let, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yeah, tell them. <laughs> the Chargers mm-hmm. have no offensive weapons, and for the love of God. Herbert is Trevor Lawrence. I'm tired of hearing about this mm-hmm. man doing things that he's never done and being put as a top five quarterback. They're going to be running the ball because that's all they're going to be able to do. But they and have a coach that wins now. Mm. Get this Michigan stuff. That's it. in the NFL. He was just a winner. He, Every team he he's won. He didn't walk in the door winning, though. He built a winning program, and he's got to no, build this team, team up. Quick. This team is yeah, one yeah, eight or nine quick. quick. Not this him. year. Next year. Not this year. Next year. They'll I win. Think, I yeah. believe that. I think the they, Raiders are further away. They need away. more picks. I don't. I believe that. The, see, the thing about Gardner Minshew is he's serviceable. Yeah. And they've got a great wide receiving core. They've got a great running back. They've got they've got a defense that. Yeah. Hawk. I like Antonio a, Pierce a lot too. They, they the, who's the running back? I don't know. Doesn't they don't have a great running back anymore. He's in Green Bay. Oh yeah, that's right. He is. So <laughs> they have Dang, Zemir White is their starting running back. Dag, you're right. Shut I up! I know I'm right. Shut like, up! <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna, uh, it's gonna prove to the put. It's gonna be the Raiders. They're, 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 they turn. There's some. I, I know I'm a vibe guy. Harry, Harry, I'm on the vibe. I love Antonio Harry. Pierce. I love I'm Antonio Pierce. Vibes. Yeah. I'm on the vibes, Harry. I got the vibes. I'm telling you. You're right. The Raiders got the vibes more than the Chargers for and sure. <laughs> for sure. Because I hate the punk coach. Me too. I, yeah. I hate. I don't like. I like the Chargers. I like Harbaugh, but I'm, I like I'm the a Chargers. Harbaugh but Harbaugh family, we love the Harbaugh yeah. family. But I'm just saying, next year and I. Shut up. Herbert has to fall, bro. <laughs> Herbert can't come in here and turn his life around with this coach. He's got to earn it. Tired of this. Shenanigans. He's better than Lawrence, though. I'll say that. He's better than Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. That's what he's, he's better got. than Trevor Lawrence. I'll Who say you? that. Out of highs. Raider Nation. <laughs> Everybody hates the Chiefs. Everybody hates the Chiefs. Uh, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards up in here so we can get there. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, we don't have a sponsor, but I'd like to take like a 30 second commercial break so I can go sip on some lean. So here you go. Enjoy this. Commercial. Damn, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Y'all a sorry ass team. Facts. Fuck the 49ers. Damn, I hate the 49ers. I hate y'all. I hate the 49ers. Fuck y'all. Bow, 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 bow. Y'all some booty jams. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all lost to the jams. Bow, 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 bow. Y'all some booty cheeks. Hey, 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 hey. Super Bowl losing streak. Super Bowl losing streak. Oh, <laughs> oh, I knew oh, I was right. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> the God NFC, damn. The NFC West, gentlemen, we got the Rams, the Seahawks, the 49ers, and the Cardinals. Harry, who you got? Uh, it should be the Niners. I mean, their team is, you know, again, as much as they're in a little bit more sort of turmoil since the Super Bowl, uh, they're still pretty stacked relative to most teams. So they should win. And uh, I don't think the Rams will be much of a much of a competitor. Jason? I'm going to go with the Seahawks again, like I did last year. New coach that out of Baltimore to really uh, wow. you know, help that defense out and get them going. Uh, the Niners, without Trent Williams, that offense is just not the same without him there in the left tackle. And he's, held, he'll, he's not scared to hold out until October. He's done it before. So uh, I really wanted to put the Niners third with pure hate in my heart, but I, I have them second. And then I got the uh, Rams and then the Cardinals, who are up and coming but just not ready yet. So I am taking the Rams – and that is with the caveat of health. As yeah, long yeah. as Stafford stays healthy mm-hmm. for most of the year, I'm taking the Rams. Uh, they're picking wide receivers out of trash bins and making them Jerry Rice. <laughs> uh, they got Puka Nakua. They got Kalua Gagua. They got the they got Cup out there. Like they just out there. They got dudes. Um, they're going to be balling. Now the defense is going to suffer a little bit, but their offense, the way that McVay can move the ball and manipulate and manufacture points, I just feel like. The Trent Williams thing is huge. Without Trent Williams, they can't really win out there. The whole paying your wide receiver, they can't pay everybody. They lost guys. They got guys that are still coming off an injury, and it's always fucked the 49ers now too. So I just pray and pray and pray on their downfall. And uh, the Seahawks, 
I don't believe in Gino. I no, like I Gino. I'm happy for Gino that he turned his life around and they wrote back and he didn't write or something with the letter. But <laughs> I just don't believe in Gino Me yet. Either. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Rams. Um NFC uh who cut Boston Scott? The Rams cut Boston Scott. Damn. He got signed already. I'm, okay, never mind. I was about to say fuck the Rams, but I'll leave him on there. Um <laughs> NFC. Oh boy, he's gonna get some run. Um, so NFC style, <laughs> you got the Buccaneers, the Saints, the Panthers, and the Falcons. The Panthers are in the running with the Pats for the worst team in football. Who you got, Jason? I'm gonna go with the Bucks. I know the Falcons are the trendy pick. Everyone thinks Kirk Cousins is ready to lead them to the playoffs, and now finally all their weapons are gonna show what they truly are. But what if this whole time their weapons are just what they are? What if Drake London's not that good? What if Kyle Pitts isn't that good? What if Kirk Cousins isn't ready to come back? You have the Bucks with Baker Mayfield. They brought Mike Evans back. They uh, Rashad White running the ball. They got a decent offensive line, and they, you know, they are not great, but they know how to win. Harry, I like that. I like that argument by Jason uh, for the Bucks, but I'm gonna go with the Falcons for the for those trendy reasons that Jason just talked about. So yeah, they got a quarterback last year. They had you know arguably the worst quarterback in the league, and they still you know won seven games or whatever they won. So. I think finally having a, a good quarterback and who's the, who do they draft? Whoever they drafted, I like him too. So whether it's Kirk or, or the guy they drafted, Penix. Uh, yeah, Penix. I think Penix is, looks pro ready. So I'm going with the Falcons. Oh God. So if Kurt is healthy and he stays healthy, it is going to be the Falcons because Kurt does one thing in a regular season. Lights it the fuck up, unless it's Monday night <laughs> or Thursday. Without the cursing. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, lights it. Yeah. He's Ned Flanders. I you like that? <laughs> you like that? Liberty Biberty, guys. I apologize. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is Mark. You are right, but Kirk Cousins anytime but Sunday night, Monday night, and in the playoffs. That's right. Anytime there's no pressure. I tell you what, he'd be busting pipes. You know what I mean? Like, look, 300 yards every time. He's wife, he's giving it to her a long time. She offers him a threesome and he starts fumbling. He don't know how to, he don't know how to bring it home. You know I mean, there's too much pressure for the guy. You I don't know think I mean? anybody's ever made a Kirk Cousins threesome analogy before. Aye, Congrats on that. You should win an award for that's that. That's I'm trying to make it do what it do, Kirk. I'm trying to help you out, brother. You know what I mean? Ned Flanders is getting busy on the mic. Um, but yeah, so during the regular season, regular season games, he is phenomenal. So if he's healthy, he is going to light it up with all those Bijan or bust. Bijan is going to look like a totally different running back with a seasoned quarterback. And that is what Kurt is good for. So in a division where guys are going to be, eh, because we like Baker, I think we're all happy for Baker and Baker's tale of life. And we laugh at the Browns because he's the only one that won a playoff game for them in the last 20 years. And they got rid of him. and look at him being a steward and, 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 and finally calming down and, you know, yeah. relaxing and doing less commercials and losing exactly. out on things, and now he's become mature, and we're happy for him. And the Bucks have a solid defense, and they got Mike Evans. But I could see the Falcons doing it if Kurt is doing what he's doing. Uh, but I think we're both, and all three of us are right about that. It, it's it's going to be one of those two teams. The Saints have no shot. Um, then we got the NFC North. Okay, the, the new prince that was promised, the Bears. The Vikings, the Packers, and the Lions. Oh, somebody gonna be wrong on this. Yep. One. Somebody gonna be wrong on this one. <laughs> the Packers, the Lions, the Vikings, and the Bears. Oh my, Harry, who's winning the division? Toughest I'm going division in football. Toughest division in football. I'm going with the Packers. Packers. Uh, yeah, okay. Packers. Jordan Love again. The what he showed in the playoffs. I think that's going to be more of what he looks like throughout the regular season. He's going to take that leap that he took and maintain it. And again, I think their team overall is built very well um, to sustain it throughout the, throughout the year. And you know, uh, Lafleur. You know, what I'm saying he's a winner too. And you know, winning winning with Jay Love as much as he did last year, making the playoffs, almost almost beaten uh, the Niners. I'm going with the Packers. Okay, mustache Sally Rod. Right, I hear you. Um, Jason. <laughs> Here we go. I thought I had a super pick that was gonna be all controversial and stuff, but I think the Packers are gonna win. Oh. That. Right? Detroit wins last year. Detroit's not a franchise that is used to success. So mm. it's two years in a row for them to mm. be good. Jared Goff is not a question mark, but I don't know if he's as good as Jordan Love. Right? Jordan Love has all the arm talent in the world. They added Josh Jacobs, who was supposedly really good on the Raiders, but he'll probably not work in this analogy for uh, BG over there, who I know isn't going to take the Packers. <laughs> I like the receivers are so deep on the Packers. They got a new D coordinator. And then Lions second, 
Bears third and the Vikings far back at the yeah. Silence. You better I'm, the gonna Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say exactly how this is gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna take the Lions. Okay. Then I'm gonna take the Bears. Oh then I'm gonna take the Packers. Let us not forget wow. that Jordan Love was like 500 before that little run at the end of the season was those six game wins. As much credit as he's getting for being so great and lauded, the Eagles get discredited for having a bad end of the season. The Eagles were 10 and one. They fell apart the last month of the year. He came together the last month of the year. Then he went and played one of the worst playoff team and franchises in NFL in the last 30 years, which is the Dallas Cowboys, who do nothing but potentially lose. They were 16-0 and at home, and you go in there and you beat that team. Why? Because they're a bunch of morons. Mm-hmm. Then you go and you beat another team. Why? Because you lucked out for some reason. Somebody's out there making terrible plays. They just let you walk down the field. Oh, but then you lost. It oh, should be San Fran. The field goal kicker missed the game when yeah. the field goal. I, I know, but they, and they were so close, right? They were going to do it. But – they got semi exposed, and, and I just feel like he's got all this money on him. And we're going to talk about it next week. They're going to start the year off stripping and dipping and down there in Brazil. There's a lot of young players in that team. There's a lot of ass shaking down there in them beaches, and they're going to come out and get kicked in the mouth. And everybody's going to question everything. And that little two hundred million dollars in his pocket is burning a hole out there in Green Bay. And I think that the Bears finally got somebody capable, somebody handleable, somebody who's out there finger pale and never worried about nothing. He looks so dang I'm good. And they gave him all the weapons. And the defense is still out there winning them seven, eight games a year. So I'm taking the dang on Bears second. I'm taking the lines because I think that the kneecapper deserves it. He has built a team. You talk about Harbaugh, how he turns the team around. This man who everybody laughed at when he was out there crying, talking about biting knees, he had the worst press conference before the the coked out guy down there in uh, Miami, and then Gase. Nick Sirianni. Yeah. Gase. <laughs> it was it was it was Gase, him, Nick, and then Nick kind of leapfrogged everybody. But when he came out there, and we're biting kneecaps. We're gonna get back up. We're gonna eat it. I'm like, what? What? But he has turned that franchise around, and he deserves for somebody who means absolutely nothing to the sports world to give him some credit. Now, somebody that's a nobody is me. I'm going to back you on this one, Campbell. You got the division. Um, Real quick before we go on the Caleb Williams thing, when he had his little highlight plays in the preseason, mm-hmm. what was the big rush <clears throat> everyone online? to be like, oh, Justin Fields was doing the same stuff last year. Like, he wasn't. He doesn't throw the ball like that. He can't throw the ball like Caleb Williams, and that's his biggest issue. The runs, yes, they look similar, but he doesn't pass the ball like that. Hey, Harry. You know, you know, um, Carson Wentz sucks. Yeah. Year after he helped us get to a Super Bowl, half the nation was like, Carson Wentz sucks. And then the other <laughs> half say, Don't you talk about Carson like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Three. Yeah, and then he so, oh. so then that, but he got injured. He sacrificed <laughs> yeah, his yeah, life. Yeah. A01, <laughs> praise him. Yeah, a uh, little bit, a little bit. <laughs> he turned. He turned water into an IPA out here. He helped us out <laughs> to get that George W. So that's why you know that is it was half, just funny. Like, there, there's half the cult right of people out here that will just Justin fields it up, and then the other half is like, oh, he, he never did anything for me. So uh, it is funny. But like you say, Wentz actually did go. He was the MVP of the league before he got hurt. He I don't know what Justin Fields. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> he, he was. He right, was. Yeah. It. Um, so it, it's 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 funny how that works out. Yeah. Um, now for the main event, the, the the thing you've all been waiting for, the thing that Nick Wright has told us, Nick Wright <laughs> said to the nation Third place. on television <laughs> that it was going to be the Dallas Cowboys, the Washington Commanders, the Philadelphia Eagles are somehow going to stumble to beat out the New York Giants to be third in the division. Um, everyone else on the panel laughed at him, called him an idiot, wrote down notes so they could bring it back up to him later on. He has been an absolute Star Wars hater of Jalen Hurts, and I know exactly why. As a fan, he is a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He grew up in a lifetime of loserville and not having anything. He got a coach that is from Philadelphia that brought Philadelphia to prominence, and then he gets that coach, and he would like nothing more to the act like that coach never donned a cap in Philadelphia, never did anything. He was born and raised in Kansas City. He now has his own king at quarterback, and the only one besides Tom Brady, the anointed one, to beat him or even look close to beating him is Burrow 
and Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts lost, but Jalen Hurts on that day looked better than him. And he has made it his goal in life to discredit, disrespect, and not properly represent the Philadelphia Eagles at every single turn because Jalen Hurts is one of the sexiest men in football, just like Bryce Harper is the sexiest man in baseball. <laughs> and I know that's what it is. And his wife's black, and she out there looking at that man on Jet Magazine every day. He like, forget Jalen Hurts. You're married to me. You're married to me, woman. Okay, we got a mixed family, and you got to love me. I know Jalen cute. So he comes out with that haterade every single week. You ain't fooling nobody, Nick. I know what it is. I know. What it is. Tell your wife to block him and stop hating on my quarterback. I know he looked good. Every girl I talked to me like when Jay Hurts, I was like, shut up, you with me. I don't look like you. You're making me feel bad about myself. I've said I've had to do that too. I'll tell you what, I've had to do that too. Hey, <laughs> Jalen, Jalen's that man, you know. I, I know why you're like, you wear your little Jordan earring. You know, I know why. Uh, yeah. He's a sweet talk Jordan. He's got a, yeah, damn, damn. I mean, damn. I know how he got you. you know, cut his mic. <laughs> now, go ahead, Jason, and tell me who's winning. The, actually, for this one, we're going in order. Who's got the division? Uh, give me the order of this division. We want we want all of them, Jason. How, how's it going to go down? You want the full order? Full order. All right, real quick on your last point. Do you think those networks have a mandate to just talk about the Eagles for engagement? Hurts isn't the top 10 quarterback. The Eagles are going to finish third. Do you think it's just engagement farming? 1,000% because right. the top markets that move the needle right. are Philadelphia Rage and right. Cowboys <laughs> Lotion. Yep. Those <laughs> are two things. Oh, and then also sprinkle in a bit of a Lakers lube. <laughs> you got your a yeah. show, bro. Yeah. You've got yourself a show. The Yankees are not holding up their part because right. the Yankees used to be in that little that little combo unit, you know, but they've, they've fallen out of grace. So uh, that, it's definitely what it is about moving yeah. that needle. All right, so obviously the Eagles are going to win that division. Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, we all have that. Fred, yeah. I can't see my else winning yeah. that division. Hell no. yeah, uh, yeah. I have the Cowboys second. I don't know where all this Washington love is coming from, where everybody thinks they're going to finish and make the playoffs. Like I get it. The quarterback looks good. I don't have anything bad to say about them. They have one receiver. Their defense is not that good. Their O-line's not that good. I just don't get where all this Washington love is coming from. And the Giants, I mean, they have a better coach than Washington, but that's about it, right? Outside, yeah. I guess the league neighbors is a better receiver than, anybody, than Terry McLaurin. So Giants last and probably one of the worst teams in the league also. Harry. Yeah, I mean, I hate to uh, have the exact same order, but I do. I mean, again, the, the Cowboys have built themselves with enough of a team to be better than those two trash teams, uh, Redskins and the Giants. But, yeah, the Birds are definitely taking it. I got them for sure winning. Um, but, yeah, fuck the Cowboys. Hopefully they come in last. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> so um, I got the Eagles. I got the Commanders. Oh. I got Dallas. And I got the Giants. I don't wish injury on anybody, but I think CeeDee Lamb missing the whole summer is going to mean something. I think that the discord and losing a lot of players because Jerry did not re-sign people is going to mean something. I think that um, Dak Prescott playing without a contract net is going to mean something. I think that Zeke Elliott is a grandfather out there in the backfield. I think that is going to mean something. I feel that the Cowboys are going to win at home because it's what they do. The refs also help them out with that. But I feel like on the road this year, people are going to take it to heart to go and kick them in the nuts. And I hope that it gets done. The commanders have done something that is in a weird tier of hope for them. Now, again, I know what you said about the weapons. The last two or three years, with Heineke and whoever the other quarterback was, they against the Eagles look like always, always, Patrick always Mahomes. against the yeah, always. Look like Patrick Mahomes. Look, Our I secondary mean, wasn't super it, good. Though, it was, so. but again, they're out there hitting hitting throws, and then they go out every once, every like three weeks, they beat teams. You're like, how did they beat this team? Right, and that's yeah. with no cohesion. That's with a terrible owner who's out here molesting people and, and, and violating women and small children. Probably, uh, no, no evidence of that, but probably something wrong. Uh, and Sam Howe, too. Yeah, and so they, they were doing things that were like, man, how are they even winning games? And I think that with a new regime, new ownership, um, more care towards the players, it's the same thing when you said about the um, Antonio Pierce thing, the interim thing. There's a, I feel like there's a boost when, when there's a regime change, and I feel like that is going to help them. I also feel like Fuck the Dallas Cowboys with yeah. all my heart. Any kind of edge exactly. to having them go lower in the standings, they will. I'll also put this out because we said it again. I said it before, but I'll say it 
for this episode because it's, it's very important. The Dallas Cowboys will be fishing for a quarterback. They want Sanders. They want to middle the road, lose games because they know they're not winning a Super Bowl with Dak. They know that Dak is going to leave them. And so what is the point of going out here, paying all these guys, and then losing the quarterback and having to rebuild anyway? So I feel like this is the year where you don't pay your quarterback. If I'm Dak, I'm not putting my life on the line for you, bro. I'm not rolling out for that 30-yard run I could have got. You know what? Here's Zeke. Go fall four for a minus two because I'm not doing it. Standing in the pocket, I'm throwing his jaw away, bro. I'm not – nope, not risking it. I've already – he's already been injury prone. So I feel like when you don't pay a guy at that level and he's got every single thing in it, you can't trade him, you can't franchise tag him, he is going to protect himself. Uh, uh, and tr- and lo- they can believe in Trey Lance. I forgot they had the Trey Lance. They better, they better put they him in the game. They should forget they have him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they I was going to say – as a matter of fact, that'll help you get your door. You go ahead and put him in there right yeah, now. Yeah, shoot. Go ahead and put him in there right now. So um, that that's how I feel about the Cowboys, and that's why I think that the Commodores are going to be second in the division and the Giants are going to pull up the rear. Um, so I got the the, the Pats, the, the Panthers, and the Giants. Who's coming in last? I might make another bet. Who's going to be the worst team in the NFL this year? I think the Patriots. Yeah, Patriots, I mean, they, without they, looking at the schedule. <laughs> Yeah, going um, in game by game, it might be different, but man, the Patriots are just what are they? Yeah, Patriots. The Patriots are. I, I, I can stay on my back because that's optimism. So. Yeah, worst roster is probably the Panthers, but you assume Bryce Young's going to show yeah. some improvement, right? Like just a little bit with yeah, a I different think so. in there. I think like, so. Their yeah. draft picks, their running back that they drafted, he's you know still still hurt. He's not going to be ready till week four or five, something like that. Jonathan Brooks, I think is his name, and uh, so. They, they could, you know, they're definitely going to suck. I, I would say New England, though, this year. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about it again next week. But, uh, Harry, the Eagles win in the division. How many wins you got that? Dude, I think we did the picks, right? I think I, I think I had them at 12 or 13. Make a change. We're going to talk about it next week. This is just for us to talk about. Yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm going 12. Or, sorry, 13 and 4. 13 and 4. 13 and 4. Jason, we'll talk about it again next week. But Yeah, I think uh, 11 or 12. Uh, their depth scares me, the Eagles. All right, I'm going 17 and 0. Nice. Because, like I said, it could change next week, but I'm going 17 and 0. Uh, actually, that's a lie. I'll go 16 and 1 because they're not going to beat Lamar. Lamar uh, yeah, you got, you got to make it 15 and 2 because we're not going to be the Redskins twice. Season, they won't need that one either. So, uh, right. see, okay. <laughs> Washington <laughs> always beats us once. Yeah. Dallas, not, not Dallas. Dallas. This, yeah. this year, this year, I, Harry, I, 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 picked, I picked Dallas to lose both games when we did the picks earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying this year, no, not Dallas. This oh. year, the Commodores are getting smoked both games by the Eagles. They're getting okay. smoked. Okay. That's what the team you, you just got them. You got them in second the division. The team that I just, <laughs> like, that I just said. <laughs> so, okay. There, there, there is a thing. That, no, no. You didn't get me. <laughs> no, nah, it's just it's going to be tight. Have, if we didn't have there, – there's two things I can guarantee you about this season. The Washington Commanders are going to get smacked by the Philadelphia Eagles. And obviously, but more so true than ever, because they have given us a problem last year. Yeah. The New York Giants are going to get the mouse. Boston Scott as the giant killer is going to look like fucking Pee Wee Herman out there on the field compared to what Saquon is about to do to the New York Oh, my Giants. God. Destroy them. Yeah. They're going to get destroyed. Touchdowns. And then, <laughs> and then uh, 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 the boy, the boy Dawson, uh, yeah. the way he was talking – he was talking like a guy that was like, okay, so maybe I'm not a number one. I could be a number two. Right. I'm happy being a number three because when I walked out here on this field and I saw a stadium with seats that work, uh, uh, coffee for free, uh, they, they oh cooked breakfast up in here. Like my boy cried when he got on the field in Philadelphia <laughs> because it's literally going from a minor league, not even a triple A team, a minor league team, then going to the moon. You went to a space <laughs> program, bro. So you think he's not going to be in there like, yo, that lineman, yeah, he be cheating on his wife. So just tell him about Susie and <laughs> on, on the thing. And yeah, the kicker, I tell you what, his his brother be gambling a lot in his name. So I mean, just get in his ear. And we, they're going <laughs> to crush the commandos this year on that strength alone. It's just like when D Jack left here and McNabb left and went down there. They had a little bit of extra juice in their tank. And when D Jack was walking backwards, moon walking on us, it hurt like the Dickens. Okay. Oh, man. I'm expecting that trade. 
a I forgot power what happened. To come back our way. Okay. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm expecting. Right. Don't try to double fruit loop me on the stuff I'll be talking about. Right. <laughs> I said what I said. That's why I said what I said what I said the first. Right. And you gonna ask me about math and tell my 16 to one because of the dude number three acting like I didn't go to Clayton. I was on top of the class, Jason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of the pack over here, bro. Two plus two is nine, bitch. Okay. So, <laughs> we going to do it. We going to do right, it. All right. I apologize for renting. Go <laughs> <right. laughs> I think I blacked out. But, um. <laughs> They had called the Commodores again. Commodore, uh, yep. but, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> that's what that's what my hope is. I, I hope for that inside knowledge, that inside scoop. And uh, I'm putting $8 million on a four touchdown game from Saquon. <laughs> Be touch pushing, they might even launch him in that draw. He might even pull out this bitch. Like, <laughs> I just, yo, he got it in his heart to go out there because that is a thing that's you got to think about, right? Like, so Boston Scott is the giant killer, and yeah. he's one of the smallest Mighty Mouse guys on the field. And if he could do it, like I said, I don't know if his girl cheated on him with a dude from New York. Yeah. I don't know if like his dad went out for milk up there and never came back. But something <laughs> happened in New York where that kid was just out there just <clears throat> thugging. Yeah. And I noticed Saquon got that same feeling. Mm. Oh, you don't want to pay me? Oh, you, you want to talk weirdly? Not badly, because they didn't talk bad about it, but you want to be weird yeah. on Hard Knocks and bring my name out there and call me on the phone and have me involved in your little shenanigans? Right. I'm going to make y'all wish you never drafted me. I'm going to make y'all wish you never drafted me. Absolutely. Um, their owner's going to fire the GM right after that game, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Literally, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a legit call right there. That might be, honestly. <laughs> they got to put odds on that. He's, he, he's going to make it to the end of the season, but he is gone. Yeah. That, that hard knocks, I feel like the owner also kept walking into the room just to plant that seed. You know, yeah. I don't want you to get rid of him, right? But I'm not no, paying. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 What are you doing with a quarterback? Are we getting a guy? Oh, yeah, we're not I would not really hate guy. if he goes to Philadelphia. <laughs> I'd really hate if he. Uh, he, kept, he kept coming in. Really hate him. that, like, bro. What are you in here whispering about this? Stuff? You know that you're on camera, like, so your quarterback knows you don't believe in him. Your running back knows that you kind of wanted him, but you didn't go in there and say pay him. You right. didn't say that though. You know what I mean? That's yeah. so. Funny. Of course, you have to go back to Daniel Jones. Like, hey, he yeah. got you a weapon, man. Well, I was did, like, were you gonna draft a quarterback? Like, hey. no. <laughs> I, like, the Tim Tebow effect they should have never drafted in the first place is gonna tell them about how they feel about how they should have been. So, um, the last thing, uh, Eagles put up their fifty-three man roster, and I kind of don't even care about it because we do know how how he rolls. The league is letting go of people. We're out here stashing dudes on IR and phantom injuries. There's gonna be dudes moving to the practice squad. We might pick up people, you know, as, as a yeah. Philadelphia Eagles guy. Everybody on the internet's like, get Frank Gore Jr. Get I mean, me. <laughs> everybody's favorite seventh round draft pick is yeah. coming to the Eagles because of Howie. That and any former Eagle. Yeah, any former yeah. Eagle. If their dad played here, if their mom like, was a lunch lady here, like we're getting them. So there's a connection there. So uh the the, the team is gonna change a little bit, but in general, um what's the biggest impact need harry what what do you need from this team for it to be a good season what do you need what's the most important thing to you oh my god <laughs> i mean i think the most important thing is man that's tough but the single yeah. most important thing is is jalen is jalen i think there's you know people still want to talk about him and that you know say that his mvp caliber season was like an anomaly a little bit i think that i don't believe that but i think at the same time the level has not been as consistently elite uh, since that season and since the, since the Super Bowl, let's say that. Um, so I think Jalen and how he's playing is the most important thing. His health, you could call it, you know, what I don't know what exact part of it um, will, will need to be good for him to be good, but Jalen's performance is probably the most important thing. But also linebackers. <laughs> That's my <laughs> secret second one that I really wanted to say, but it really is Jalen. But yeah, linebackers number two. Jason. Health is the obvious one, but that's every team, right? You can yeah. use that first. So that's the whole league. Health is the most important. They need the defense to get into that 8 to 12 range, somewhere in there, and be a higher mid-level defense. They don't have to be elite. They just can't be as bad as they were last year. The offense is going to put up points. They need the defense to get stops and create turnovers. So um, just a friendly reminder, because she's still commenting and waking up, I just want to remind Kate that Jason did take the bills. Okay, <laughs> He did take the bills. He did support family and household just to remind <laughs> you of that kate um he did do that um, he believes in that though yeah. not for sure <laughs> um the most important thing for me is time of possession i don't believe in this defense at all 
I do believe in Vic Fangio. I do believe that this defense could come along by the end of the season. But I need the offense to do the most mundane and boring thing. I need to go out there like Carson Wentz was the quarterback in 2017 and put up 28 points in the first half. I can't have slow starts. I need 28 to 33 points in the first half, and I need them to run the ball down their throats in the second half. And doing that will make the defense two things, have confidence and have rest. And if they have confidence and they have rest, they're going to get turnovers because the other team is going to be down and they have to throw the ball. And our secondary has 92 guys in it right now. So somebody gets some damn picks. But if we can control the time of possession like we did in 2017, the Eagles will be a juggernaut, and the defense can come along later on with the offense because there's a lot of young guys on the defense. So as boring and mundane as it is, the most important thing to me and the number that I'm looking at the most this year, and as sad as it sounds, is time of possession. Control that clock and control that rock. That's mm-hmm. what I think. Um, if you're still watching, I appreciate you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep it tight tonight because um, I got stuff to talk to the boys about after the show, and it's none of y'all's business. And I also might want to take a nap and do some things. So I mean, it's neither here nor there. Uh, but on top of that, uh, football season's coming back. The fills are rolling. I appreciate each and every single one of y'all. Um, like the show on YouTube. Tell somebody and make them suffer the show. And three, bring your funky ass back here next week on Tuesday where we can really rock and roll and party out because ba, 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 right. football's back. Week um, one. I mean, we might or might not put little dashes in Harry's mustache like little ice for funsies. I don't know what we're going <laughs> to do. We'll find out what happens. And uh, also one more time, just because I love doing it. Damn, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Yeah, fuck the 49ers. Y'all a sorry ass team. Thanks. Fuck the 49ers. Damn, I hate the 49ers. I hate y'all. I hate the 49ers. Fuck y'all. Bow, 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 bow. Y'all some booty, booty cheeks. cheeks. <laughs> they some booty cheeks. I, I'm never going <laughs> to that song, bro. That's the best song ever. That's the best song ever in my life. I got, I got, I got to cue it up so we can all dance to it because we be on the background screen. Y'all can't see us. We be. We gotta get, we gotta get the, that guy who wrote made that song on the on the oh, show. Yeah, right. Get him on the show. Jason, try and get him on the pod. That's your job. <laughs> go get him. Go get my boy on the pod. Find that man. Find. Him. All right, guys, we're out. We'll talk to you.